arroz guisado con jamonilla. It's one of my kids' favorites. They like it a lot more than arroz con salchichas. Let's make it, shall we? Welcome to my workshop. So the story goes, that I have no idea how this started. I'm sure it was pure necessity. Little rice, little harmonia in the pantry, and it came together and is here to stay. I've been making this dish for a while and my kids love it, especially with your favorite habichuelas recipe. So it goes really well with any kind of beans, white beans, red beans, pinto beans. Today, I'm gonna make it with my mom's red beans, but that's another recipe for another day. I start by washing four cups of rice and cutting all the aromatics, the onions, the peppers, the garlic, and the jamonilla. In a caldero, on medium-high heat, I'm adding the oil and the jamonilla first. Once the jamonilla has been browned and has released some of its flavors, I add the onions and the peppers and saute for a few minutes, making sure everything is blending very nicely and the aroma is taking over the room. If you've seen my other videos, you know that I don't like using sazon or adobo. It's just a personal preference. I just don't like the chemicals and other things that are added to that. So I make my own, but you're the king of your domain, so you can use whatever you want. In this case, if you want to use sazon, go ahead, give it a little color or adobo for seasoning. Once the onion is translucent, I'm going to add the sofrito. I'm going to saute it for about a minute or so until everything is incorporated. The reason I do this is because we are layering flavors. If I add all the ingredients at the same time without frying or sauteing, the onions and the sofrito, the water, everything will be blended together and it will not have the flavors that I'm looking for. Once the sofrito has sauteed for about a minute or so, as you can see here, the water is evaporating. All we have is just the intense flavor. So once the water evaporates, it intensifies everything in there. The flavors of the onion, of the jamonilla, of the sofrito, just purely by evaporating the water. Now we add the tomato sauce, salt, pepper, granulated garlic, oregano, paprika, cumin, fresh garlic, and the olives and once all these ingredients are added as you can see this becomes the real sofrito with all the ingredients melting together and intensifying the flavors as you can see there's not a whole lot of liquid and it's very easy to stir the flavors has intensified quite a bit now we can add the four cups of chicken stock and the two cups of water we're going to let this come to a boil uncovered now that everything has come to a boil and before I add the rice, I'm gonna go ahead and taste it. And it tastes fantastic. So everything is good, salt is great, flavors are great. I'm ready to add the rice. If I can give you a suggestion I have learned through my years of professional cooking is to extract as much flavor as you can when you're cooking anything. That only comes when you reduce the moisture or water and when you season and taste while you're cooking. So make sure that when you're cooking anything you are, remember water for the most part when you're sauteing and trying to brown or crisping up things, water is your enemy. So make sure you reduce the water or you dry the water before you do anything like that. For braising, soups, boiling, then water is your friend. All right, so now that we added the rice to the pot, we're gonna stir it really, 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 really well to make sure everything is well incorporated and nothing is sticking to the bottom of the pot. We're gonna let it come back to a boil, reduce the heat to medium, or medium low, I'll say about five in your stove. Let it reduce without stirring, undisturbed, and not putting a cover on. Let it uncovered and let the liquid evaporate. I usually use one and a half parts to one part water to rice. So in this case, I have four cups of rice, so I'm using six cups of liquid. And you saw the sofrito, the sofrito was really dry, so it doesn't have any extra liquid. So that's what I'm using. And that's usually what I use in any rice preparation. Now you're gonna let all the liquid reduce in this medium, medium low heat until you can start hearing a sizzle like this. Like you can see here, the water has evaporated. You see a little bit of water in between the rice and you can hear the sizzle of the oil underneath all the rice. This takes around 20, 25 minutes, but you gotta keep an eye on it. 
when you hear the sizzle, that just means that pegao is starting to form. Now, as you can see, the rice is not completely cooked yet. Now we're gonna stir everything really well with the sides, the bottom, especially the middle of the caldero. However, we're not scraping the bottom because we want to make that pegao that we love. Once everything has been stirred really well, we will finally put the lid on it and we're gonna go on low heat for about 20 to 25 minutes. Is this the only way to make rice? No, it isn't. Is this the right measurements? They're the ones that work for me. You can probably do two cups of water per cup of rice. You can do one and a quarter cups of water per cup of rice. It's up to you. This works for me. It's always fail proof, but you gotta follow the steps like uncover it first and then cover the second part of the cooking. And look at that, voila. It's fluffy, cooked well, and full of flavor. Everything is together. Today, like I said earlier, I'm serving it with my mom's red beans recipe which we'll do some other time and we'll leave it for another day this has been great it goes fantastic with any of your beans preparation especially white beans goes really well with this rice and obviously avocado thank you for watching it's been great doing this again uh, please leave a comment leave ideas that you like to see and remember that the recipe is under the bio on my youtube channel on the chef tito's workshop please follow me on instagram tiktok twitter youtube and here on facebook god bless stay healthy ciao